In this video, we will introduce you to in vitro fluorescence imaging using the IVIS Imagers and Revities portfolio of targeted fluorescent agents. These reagents are designed as drug-like molecules that enable direct and quantitative readouts of biological processes in vivo. It is important to match the proper reagent to your research objectives. In vitro prescreening can also be an important precursor for successful in vivo fluorescence imaging. Here, we will guide you through preliminary assessment of fluorescent reagents using Revity's IVIS imaging platform. There are fluorescent reporters for many disease biomarkers. These biomarkers include disease-related proteases, surface receptors like alpha V beta 3 integrin, HER2 and folate receptors, and processes like metabolism, cell death, and hypoxia. In addition to using commercially available targeted and activatable probes, you can label your own antibodies, cells, and nanoparticles. Fluorescence imaging agents are very adaptable. Strategies can be implemented quickly for use in multiple types of experimental procedures. Unlike bioluminescent and fluorescent proteins, fluorescent probes can be translated into clinical use. The imaging agents we will highlight fluoresce in the far-red and near-infrared wavelengths. Wavelength is an important factor when performing in vivo imaging. There are some endogenous proteins, such as collagen in the skin, that emit autofluorescence signal on the lower end of the visible wavelength spectrum limiting detection of fluorescent reporters such as GFP, RFP, and FIT-C to very shallow subcutaneous or epidermal imaging. Therefore, we recommend using fluorescent reporters that emit in the far-red and near-infrared range between 650 and 850 nanometers. Tissue scattering and autofluorescence is not an issue for in vitro imaging, but selection of far-red probes will improve success if you move into in vivo models. Here, we'll focus on in vitro validation of Revity's near-infrared fluorescence imaging agents and dyes that are designed to explore a variety of functional and molecular readouts underlying disease. These imaging agents fall into four major categories. Our first category of fluorescent reporters is activatable agents. These are composed of a specific enzyme, cleavable peptide sequence flanked by two fluorophores in their off state. When the fluorophores are connected, their proximity to each other quenches their ability to generate a fluorescent signal upon light excitation. When these agents encounter their molecular targets, the specific protease enzymes cleave their peptide sequences. Cleavage occurs, releasing the fluorophores and allowing them to fluoresce in response to light excitation. We have activatable agents that are cleaved by a variety of important disease-related proteases including cathepsins, matrix metalloproteinases, and neutrophil elastase, providing insights into a myriad of diseases like cancer, inflammation, and cardiovascular disease, among others. Our next category of fluorescent reporters are targeted agents. As the name suggests, these agents consist of a fluorophore conjugated to a targeting molecule that recognizes and binds to a specific cell surface receptor or biomarker. The types of targeting molecules used include small molecules, large proteins, antibodies, and small peptides. For example, our IVASense folate receptor probe is highly specific to folate receptor protein, which is upregulated in many growing tumors due to their increased metabolic demand for folate. Our IVASense integrin receptor probe targets alpha V beta 3 integrin, associated with tumor cell metastases and new vasculature development. We've also developed a category of vascular and physiologic imaging agents. Vascular fluorescent imaging agents are not specifically targeted. They're distributed passively through blood vessels to enable imaging vascularity blood pooling in tumors and inflammation and vascular leakage. The range of different molecular weights, physical chemical compositions, and pharmacokinetic and distribution properties for these agents provide an imaging tool for both accurate and chronic vascular changes. Physiologic agents are also designed as non-targeted agents. Ivacense gastrointestinal and GFR are used to assess rates of gastric emptying or glomerular filtration rate, respectively. Lastly, we have classes of labeling agents and nanoparticles with unconjugated fluorophores that you can use to label your own antibodies or cells for in vivo imaging. You can custom label your antibodies, proteins, or peptides using flexible chemistries based on bioorthogonal reactions we also have cell labeling dyes such as DIR that are membrane lipophilic dyes for efficient labeling of various cell populations such as stem cells and immune cells for short-term fluorescent tracking of the cells in vivo. In summary, we have a complete labeling solution for you to explore for your own research applications. Typically, we recommend that users test fluorescent probes in an in vitro setting with cells prior to transition to in vivo studies. Doing so will help you assess the probe's affinity for the target cells. Validate specificity and binding efficiency by comparison to a negative control cell line. Optimize the instrument and experimental workflow for in vivo studies. Here's an example of how to perform in vitro fluorescence analysis. We have 396 well assay plates, each plated with two tumor cell lines. One is a 4T1 breast cancer cell line expressing firefly luciferase. The second is an A549 lung cancer cell line expressing a redshifted luciferase. We've previously performed bioluminescence characterization of these cells to test for luciferase transfection efficiency and photon output in vitro. 
We will now test a battery of fluorescent probes to assess their binding efficiency and targeting specificity to these cells in vitro. The probes we are going to test are a cathepsin cleaved activatable fluorescent probe called IvaSense Pan Cathepsin 680, an alpha V beta 3 integrin targeting probe called IvaSense Integrin Receptor 750, and a HER2 receptor binding probe emitting at 645 nanometers. The HER2 receptor is overexpressed on many human breast tumor cell lines. Start with a tissue culture dish with cells. Let's say our 10 centimeter tissue culture dish contains a monolayer of 4T1 tumor cells. Reconstitute the probe according to the recommendations in the datasheet. Add the reconstituted agent to the tissue culture plate so the final effective concentration in the cell media follows the recommended guidelines. Gently swirl the plate to mix the agent with the media and place the plate in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for the recommended incubation time. These times often vary, but in our case, we incubate overnight. The next day, we wash the cells with PBS, trypsinize, bend them down, and resuspend the cells to a desirable concentration. In our example, the cells are maintained at a concentration of 500,000 cells per 100 microliters. The cells are then added to multiple wells of a black 96 well plate for imaging. We will store the cells in an incubator as we set up our software for imaging the plates. For fluorescent acquisitions, we recommend using the imaging wizard for setup. It will guide you through the setup your fluorescent acquisition and assist you with proper filter selection. To begin, select the Imaging Wizard button from the control panel. The Imaging Wizard setup screen will appear. Start by clicking the Fluorescence option. In the second screen, we select Filter Pair and Epi Illumination. This is reflectance illumination, meaning that the light will be projected from the top of the instrument onto the stage. Select Next at the bottom right hand corner of the window. Choose your reporter from the list or enter your excitation and emission maxima manually. In our case, we will start with IvaSense Integrin Receptor 750. After selection, the relevant excitation and emission filters are chosen automatically. The final screen requests details about acquisition parameters and experimental design such as subject type, auto or manual exposure, and field of view. Select Well Plate from the Imaging Subject drop-down menu. We recommend Auto Acquisition Settings and choose the appropriate field of view, usually C or D depending on the number of plates to be imaged, and then click Next. Click Acquire Sequence. Label the images appropriately in the Edit Image Labels window and save the labels. Once the instrument has finished acquiring the images, the status light on the instrument will change to green. We will now repeat these steps for the other two probes. After collecting data for all three probes, we will proceed with analysis. The basic workflow for analyzing fluorescence in well plates includes checking the quality of the acquired data by looking at the counts recorded. The image pixels should measure above 600 and below 60,000 raw counts. To check this, open the Image Adjust tab on the tool palette. Set the color scale minimum to 600. If the value is already above 600, you will see signal in the wells and there is no need to reacquire the image using more sensitive settings. With fluorescence imaging, we require an excitation light source to visualize our probes. Typically, the excitation and emission filters are very close together. Reflection off the stage may bleed through the emission bandpass filter due to the close proximity, and present as a ring on the stage as seen here. This artifact may be more pronounced with some filter pairs due to differences in spacing between the filter pairs for the individual probes. To correct for this phenomenon, go to the tool palette, select the corrections tab, and select adaptive fluorescence background subtraction. For well plates or anything with a dark color, it will be necessary to crop the data. Right click on the image and select crop area. Using your mouse, left click and drag a rectangular mask over the wells of your well plate. Click set when done. To get quantitative results from your fluorescently labeled cells, switch from the raw data unit of counts to the calibrated unit. With bioluminescence, you may recall that the calibrated unit is radiance or photons. However, with fluorescence, we must account for the excitation light projection on the stage and the non-uniformity of that light projection. We can do this by normalizing for excitation light intensity per square area of the field of view. Therefore, the calibrated unit for epi-illumination fluorescence is termed radiant efficiency. Photons per second per centimeter squared per steradian divided by microwatts per centimeter squared. You can easily select this unit from the unit's pull-down menu in the upper left-hand corner of the image window. As previously discussed, we will define a region of interest or ROI by drawing a grid measurement ROI on our image. Access the ROI drawing tools in the tool palette. Repeat the adaptive fluorescence background correction and placement of a grid ROI for each image acquired. In this case, I will right-click on the ROI and select Copy ROI from the menu. In the new images, I will right-click and select Paste ROI. If the well plate is slightly crooked, you can right-click on the perimeter of the ROI and select Rotate to adjust the ROI. 
Then with the grid ROIs drawn and properly placed, click on the Measure ROIs button in the ROI Tools tab. The ROI measurements window will open. To see quantitative fluorescent data, select Radiant Efficiency from the Measurement Types pull-down menu. Click on the Grid ROI Measurements tab. Your quantitative data will now be displayed in a grid format that mimics the well plate. To export this data, click on Select All and Copy in the lower right-hand corner of the window. The data is now copied to your clipboard and can be pasted into Excel, Prism, or other spreadsheet program. Repeat this for each of your plates. You can switch between the different images or clicks by navigating to the upper left-hand drop-down menu labeled Click. The well plate images are named by the user initials and the date and time the image was acquired. The purpose of this exercise was to determine specificity of the individual probes for each cell line. After measuring and exporting, data can be graphed to determine the level of binding versus the control wells. Media-only control wells are included to assess autofluorescence of cell media. As you can see, Ivasense Integrin Receptor 750 has a slightly higher affinity for A549 lung cancer cells, but binds both A549 and 4T1 to a high degree. The reverse is true for Ivasense Pancathepsin 680, showing higher affinity for 4T1. But both cell lines are clearly detectable above background, particularly at higher cell concentrations. The HER2 receptor probe did not have a high affinity for either cell line, even at higher cell concentrations. It's merely fourfold over background even with 1 million cells. Therefore, it's doubtful that this probe would be visible or useful for these cell lines in vivo. In summary, 4T1 loop 2 cells and A549 cells are only targeted by the Ivasense Integrin Receptor 750 and Pancathepsin 680 probes. These results indicate the presence of metastatic potential and underlying cathepsin activity. As expected, the HER2 receptor probe is not optimal for A549 cells as lung tumors express little or no HER2 receptor. Nor is it optimal for 4T1 cells as they are a murine cell line and HER2 receptors are upregulated primarily in human breast tumor cell lines. In this video, we have outlined how to determine both affinity and specificity of a fluorescent probe for various cell lines in vitro. Please see our in vivo fluorescence video for how to translate these results into an in vivo study. Thank you for watching.